everybody. Decided to go ahead and do a fourth video to explain the fracture effect in more detail to answer some of the questions on the base. And I'm attempting to allow the text a little more screen real estate by sectioning off just a portion of the screen here. So hopefully this works out uh, with the interface. So as before, we start off with a sphere, broke it up into several polygon regions. These at the end will then be merged to create the final surface. So there's a few things uh, that it helps to go in a certain order because you will run into things with proximity weight map not being evaluated by the shape uh, and the, the effect won't work. So it's best to put that proximity weight map on first and then go into shape because as soon as I start putting shapes on it changes the construction mode to shape modeling and it can screw some things up. So first thing proximity map so you go into property uh, the weight map tools, proximity map, pulls up this interface. Again, under connections, we can either say add connection and grab that null. I've put a null in here set to rings to begin with. And then you don't have to do this step with the near and far, but I like a little more, more control so that if I scale this null up, I can get a, a magnification of the effect. So not only does the the closeness to the surface affect the, pr the uh, proximity map, but also the scaling of the same object can you know, increase or decrease the effect. So I tend to, to set that up. Now, I only really have to affect one axis for the scaling. I'll uniform scale this, but you know, it's easier to set it up if I just use, say, a pick scale of X to drive this effect. So and I usually start off with say a value of four and then lock this down, grab him, and then if I do a link with, it'll automatically take this sphere and put it into my driving source over here. So I'm gonna select scale X, link, set relative value. Then I need to scale this up in three. You're not gonna be able to see this on screen, but so I've scaled it on X to three and then I set my far to what I want that far distance to be. In this case, I'll use 12. And I can either right click and say set relative values here or do it within the parameter connection editor. So I'm going to close that down so we can see this a little better. And when I knock this back down to 1, you'll see that update. So as I scale this on the x axis, you'll see that value change. So or if I scale uniformly, of course, that'll get the x-axis as well. So I'm going to set this back to 1, 1, and 1, and we're back at 0. So to see this effect, uh, this is the guy that I put the weight map on, I think. Let's pull this down and see what we've got here. Yeah, so you can see there the weight map's effect. Now if I scale this guy up and reselect him, you can see now it's spread out and it's 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 spread all over most of the surface here. So that's pretty handy for controlling magnitude of the effect. Now the next thing is once I have the proximity weight map on here and if I bring up the history for that piece or I'm sorry the uh, the stack for that piece there you can see is my proximity weight map down here below modeling. So when I jump into shape and start putting shapes on that's going to pop me into this mode automatically so this can be evaluated by whatever's on top of it. So let me pull this out of the way again. This is the fun part. You go into your shape manager and I'm going to bring this, scale this down so we can see. And you can kind of, uh, this is a great little interface. I can see it by itself here even in shaded mode if I wish. Uh, but I can see it in relation to the surrounding pieces in that view as well. So pull up, just going into the, the M tool, the point manipulation, and well, now it's for everything, edges, polygons, points, you name it. Start pulling these out. I can kind of see what's going on here. You could really make this into any shape you wanted. Uh, I tend to kind of pull the edges out a little bit, but it's not exact by any means. And you can always go back and change this after the fact to really tune your effect. So there's our shape, and if I hit base shape, that cooks all those modifiers I was putting on it and cooks them to the shape. 
So now if I scale that up to one, you can see now the shape is in full force. I'm going to leave that at one when I close this out. So we're in our altered state here. So to, in order to get the shape to see the weight map that we had applied previously, we just go under here, modulate shape key with weight map. But it's a good thing to have, go ahead and expand your clusters so that you can see your shape cluster and your weight cluster right next to each other. So, and then select from within the interface, within the Explorer, uh, select your shape, shape, modulate shape key with weight map, and then you can just click your weight map, which is right below it. Now we see an instant update there, and that lets us know it's working, because you can see that it's, it hasn't gone all the way back to its base shape. So now we can see that the, this shape modulation is working.